Alan McElroy here from Burton International and today I have the pleasure of showing you over the Bestiver 60C last chapter. Recently relocated back from her birth in Croatia, she's now afloat on her mooring just outside Plymouth. Built by k and Yacht Builders, those of you in the know will be aware they have a very established, established and well-deserved reputation for building strongly constructed aluminium ocean cruising yachts with classic lines. Last chapter is no different. She's very much uh, a practical classic in that she's got the, uh, the clipper bow and that lovely deck house, but she also delivers as a rugged, practical ocean-going yacht as well. So this morning, we're, or this afternoon, we're going to take a quick look over her decks. So dark blue top sides, these were repainted in 2019. And the stainless steel guard rail that you see there as well was largely replaced during this time. Sports a masthead rig with twin four cells, so the large reaching Genoa and smaller 100% four triangle working jib there. Substantial bow roller set up as you would expect with a boat of this, this ilk. And again from the transom. She's aft cockpit, she has folding stainless steel davits there with a number of antenna gantries also. Conventional boom there with side rails on it as you can see. Really one thing that is apparent when you step on board is the reassuring raised bulwark and high guard rails and stainless. This is a very safe deck to be on in, in any form of seaway. Stepping forward. Large deck mounted windlass there with chain stopper. Twin bow rollers, as you would imagine. Manual furling on the big reaching Genoa from Reckman, and then hydraulic furling on the working head sail, as that's the one that will possibly see more use. Moving aft, we have a large and ample sail locker shelved, giving quite a bit of deck storage there. She's just recently finished her passage back from the meds, so the dinghy is currently stowed on the foredeck. Nonetheless, she has lovely wide, clear side decks, an easy boat to move around on. Everything's got a significant feel, you know, feel of strength. Nice teak deck box there, just for the mast. White painted spar, rod rigging. See a mast mounted whisper pole there as well. And half halyards for the head sails, which is quite useful. It just cuts down on the, on the amount of line stowed on the side of the mast. Some granny bars there at the, on the deck beside the mast for a bit of extra security. Hydraulic vang. Nice detail there of the, the chromed Dorad vents and crash bars over them. And the large, bright, and airy deck house. A main sheet track nicely mounted on the deck house, keeping, keeping it well clear of the cockpit as well. Moving aft there, we have a bank of Anderson winches. Those are controlled by the hydraulic pack also. Nice overview of the cockpit there. There are large lazarettes, both port and starboard in the cockpit. A drop leaf teak table and unfinished teak in the centre and then a well stocked pedestal with nav pod. A fixed bimini over the helming area, which is a nice feature also. Hydraulic backstay, and you can just limps the windlass there for the kedge anchor as well. As I said, on the transom here, you've got a nice set of stainless steel davits, but they usefully, for marina purposes, fold in out of the way when not in use. And antenna mast there and stainless. 
and get the uh, little outboard bracket and teak and outboard motor. Spacious, deep and secure cockpit. And some aft windows in the deck house there letting even more light in. Raymarine plotter mounted on the nav pod. And then you further controls on the pedestal here for bow thruster, windlass, and if I'm correct, Genoa furler there as well on the on the bow. Engine and autopilot controls to port. Some natural coloured cockpit cushions there. Uh, you see a glimpse there to the right of the hydraulic control panel as well, and a couple of deck speakers just beneath the helmsman seat. A Morse control to left. All right, I'll have a peek into these fairly cavernous lazarettes. So this being the starboard lazarette, housing some of the services there, water maker membranes and compressors and so on, and a header tank, but despite that, still a lot of stowage. And to port, again, well organized locker there with um, your running lines and so on. Then a nice bank of Anderson stainless body winches there. And ceiling instrumentation, both to port and starboard, either side of the companionway hatch. So, stepping down into one of my favourite parts of the boat, the raised deck house. Blue leather upholstery throughout in, in, in really lovely order actually, as is all of the, the varnish work. Varnished deck beams and then a TNG deck head. So yes, very classic styling. Internal helming position there on starboard. To port we have the U-ship seating with a drop leaf table and that drops, it also folds out to extend. So uh, making the deck, deck house a really rather nice place to be. Well stocked nav station, plotters, ceiling instrumentation, autopilot controls. There's a joystick control there as well. And BHF, SSB, and some additional seating to the starboard side. Interestingly, the base of that seat lifts up and gives side access down into the engine bay as well. The saloon floor, which we'll come back to, the deck saloon floor also lifts to give overhead access to the engine bay, so actually the access all round in the machine room is, is very, very good. So moving forward, on starboard we have uh, what is effectively the day heads. Nice white clean finish. The teak cabin sole throughout, teak trim. wet locker, which we'll come back to, and a really ample sized separate shower stall. As you can see, they're thermostatically controlled shower. We just picked up on one of the radiators there as well. The yacht has, is fitted with radiators throughout, which are powered by the Ebsbacher heating system.
as I mentioned, the, uh, the ample wet locker. And so it's almost becoming a more novel feature in, in modern yachts. Stepping across to port, we have a double cabin. So this is under the deck house, ample size double berth there, a little seat. Plenty of floor space and ample hanging stowage. Lots of opening hatches throughout as well, I should mention. Okay, so glancing forward then into the saloon, to port we have a rather nice U-shaped seating area. Again, a, a table there on an adjustable base, so that will drop to facilitate a, a double in the saloon. As you can see, ample storage above the seating there. Just panning around to starboard. Adjacent the day heads, we have the control panel, the distribution panel for the 12, 24 and 220 distribution. And moving forward, opposite the saloon, just after the mast here on starboard, we have the really snug and U-shaped uh, galley, which is a really ideal passage-making galley. An abundance of storage, as you can see by the number of cupboards. A large capacity top opening fridge freezer there. Stainless force 10 cooker. Twin stainless sinks and lots of work surface. So a really sorted galley, microwave there, nicely built in, stainless. And just down beside the fridge, uh, down beside the sink here I should say, a further small drinks fridge. Just catching a glimpse there of the kill step rig as well, uh, just beside the companionway going forward. The onboard library, carrying manuals for all of the boat systems. Nice and neatly stowed, as you can see, so well documented. Right, so moving forward, we step through a small compartment, companionway. So we have a small seat to starboard here, but you can see there's a removable panel. So that actually enables you to use the settee in the forward cabin as an additional berth. But when not in use, obviously closes off and maintains the privacy of the forward cabin. So just adding a degree of flexibility there if extra berths are needed. Again, beautifully finished. High level cupboards there. And just gently swinging round to port here, we have the owner's berth, so which is an offset double. Nice light well there as well, just above the head of the bed. Antique battening on the inside of the hull. So very, very, you know, very quite traditional and styling throughout. And then we have that T just to starboard in the owner's cabin, which, as I said, has a little aperture there, which allows it to become a single berth if required. They okay, say so stepping forward then, we've got a sort of full width owner's WC and shower compartment. 
A nice teak grating, thermostatically controlled char. And as with the aft WC, that's an electric flushing. Panning back over the owner's cabin. One last look over the galley. And saloon. Television mounted up on the bulkhead there and aft of the saloon. And those are all opening hatches as you can see. Interior cabinetry is lovely and in, in, in very good condition throughout, I have to say. So, that was the best of our 60C last chapter, currently afloat on her mirroring in Plymouth and available to view by appointment.